And now a message from our sponsor. Hey everybody, it's Bootleg Captain, Captain Bootlegs here. Yeah! If you're like me, I bet you're enjoying this Toys, Toys on Tap, Tap podcast. I am enjoying it, it's very nice. But did you know you can enjoy it more just by joining that Patreon? Oh, I did not know that. There are so many cool perks available on the Patreon for you. There's <laughs> and also <laughs> and and wow, that's really a lot of stuff if you ask Bootleg Captain. Captain I don't Bootleg. understand, there were noises I couldn't hear with the perks. So join today to support Toys on Tap podcast and Bootleg Art Toys. But if you're not in a position to join the Patreon, head on over to Apple iTunes and review and subscribe. That helps out the channel as well. Okay, I'll go rate it, I guess. And remember, listen to Toys, Toys on Tap. Tap. Captain Bootleg, the bootleg captain sent you. Why did he keep referring to himself in the third Can person? I stop with the stupid voice now? I'm not sure why you made me want to sound like a pirate. Oh, so that was a fake voice. Oh, yucko! I, was doing. I didn't realize it was just a pretend voice. Oh. Yeah, what's up, baby? What the fuck is up, dude? This is, we're cl- like, audio's clear. So how you doing, man? Good, dude. It, it Hey, you are the king for working with me on this stuff. Like, my schedule's busy. I scheduled you. I was so amped at our first <laughs> interview that yeah. I threw out a date at my next opening and realized that it wasn't monday when i normally record oh no shit so it was like messing that up for you yeah I'm gonna so... have to take my phone case off give me one second. oh no worries i can still hear you go ahead uh so i was like oh sick how does the 27th work and we got it all amped and i was even like this is going to be so sick uh and then when you sent me that message i was like why the hell are we recording on a wednesday not even on an open week. Like, I just was so stoked that I fucked up my whole schedule. That's great. Well, I'm sorry. Well, it went up out then that it wasn't for me at that other time and my feeding tubes were all fucked up or whatever. Yeah. I, that was wait, the same time, right? Yeah. So it's good. Hey, we're going to, and you're the first artist that I was like, hey, when do you want this to release? Hey. <laughs> Cause I, yeah, like, I just like shit's been so busy. I haven't been able to mention that I was going to be on it. It kind of snuck up on me, honestly. Yeah. So yeah, later is better. Cause then I can like hype it and shit, bro. There we go. There we go. And we'll, we'll release it whenever. So just don't mention anything that's happening this week. Cause it'll be okay. Yeah. Tell me when you tell me when you're thinking or when you want me to start like mentioning it or whatever. And I will. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna get a little care package out to you too. Shit's been fucked, so oh. I had I didn't get to, but I'm making you something, homie. So, look, get, making me blush over here, getting me toys. Uh, so yeah, I mean, sorry that's not already there, so you can have like something on hand because that was the plan, but like life got in the way, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, so we I kind of want to talk about that, but before we start anything, let's get it started. Please, please introduce yourself and the goodness that you are. <laughs> Alrighty, my friends. Um, I'm Spice Dream, Spice Dream Toys on Instagram. Uh, my name's Theron. Most people call me T-Bone because I have a crazy first name, but I love being called T-Bone. It's it's like been my name in the punk scene for most of my life. But I've been an artist my whole life, and I uh, decided to get off my ass and stop being a total Luddite and get online and, and have fun with all the other nerds. There we go. So before we get into toys and all that stuff, we, I uh, may, or, I want to see if you're comfortable talking about some of the stomach things that we're dealing with. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. my friend. Um, we had yeah. a, a date scheduled, and sometimes it's hit or miss because of uh, medical stuff. So I want to see if you'd like to share with like the toy community some of the stuff you're dealing with. Sure thing. Um, I have a condition called idiopathic gastroparesis. That's essentially doctor speak for unknown cause paralyzed stomach. But I'm 42 now, and I got real sick around 30. Mm-hmm. But I'm essentially the point now I've had a feeding tube for almost four years, I think it is now. And I don't eat anything by mouth anymore. I'm My life's constant doctors and, like, surgeries and bullshit, honestly. But uh, toys is an amazing distraction for me and uh, an amazing motivator for me to, like, do something besides just being in bed. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's fucking crazy. I throw up a lot. I deal with basically near constant nausea yeah um but yeah it's real wild we had to miss one of our other meetings because i have a feeding tube and essentially part of it continues down into my intestines and that's how i eat i live off of like 50 milliliters of formula an hour basically i have to be on it essentially 24 hours a day but uh 
yeah, so at any rate, it wasn't down where it was supposed to be at. And so I had to like go in and get a surgery so I could eat. And it kind of messed up our last time we were trying to set this up. Man, I, this is how dumb and fucked up my brain is. My immediate thing was like, when's the last time you ate pizza? <laughs> like, dude, forever ago. Every once in a while, I'll chew on something and spit it out. Okay. Like, my doctors like encouraged me to eat if I could get away with it. Yeah. But it's been years and years of this, man. Like, I should have got the feeding tube forever ago, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't want to. And mm-hmm. I'm a stubborn motherfucker. So yeah. I was like, well, I'll just make my mouth a feeding tube and I'll just like eat less and less and less. But it got to the point where I lived like four or five years off of fruit juice and hummus and lost like 100 pounds and was like yeah. very much starving to death and hallucinating and crazy shit. And I was like, OK, I have to get the feeding tube, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. There's a lot of medical care and a lot of BS that I have to deal with. But uh, the toy scene has been amazing for me. Yeah, which is. <laughs> Something that's so good to hear, and I wish that people outside the toy community understood that, because uh, there's always that undertone sometimes where people are like, oh, you make, like, toys? And right. it's like, bitch, this is more than toys. Like, this is an right. escape. This is a life. This is art. This is, like, feeling. Fuck to the ass, yeah, especially in our little corner. But it's that way even in, like, I'm doing toy cons out here. And, like, selling just, like, extra vintage stuff I have, too, to kind of help make sure I always cover the table fee or whatever. Yeah. And, like, it's awesome conversations with nerds. And there's a lot of guys having that lifestyle, like, that that don't get into the art ones. Mm -hmm. So we just, like, do it extra hard. And then we apply, like, art and all of that 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 brings to the table. And it just elevates it even more. And we're even more serious about it. Yeah. Which, it's crazy. It's the amount of work. I don't I've never had a booth at a convention. I don't foresee that being a thing that I want to like I mean I got homies that always roll out with me and make it possible, but it's yeah. it's a ton of work and I honestly don't feel well enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so yeah, I, I rely a lot on my friends. Uh, I live with my best friend Danny since mm-hmm. I split with my wife and he helps me out a lot. Like he does a lot for me and like especially yeah. when it comes to like cons and shit like that. But he's like a creative partner for me too, kind of behind the scenes. Yeah. Um and I have other homies that help out too. And so un- unfortunately I have to lean on them a lot, but luckily I have badass friends. So I've still been able to kind of do the cons here or there when I'm feeling un- good enough to scrape. By. <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy. Cause just, I can't imagine when we, when you like walk around decon or something, you're talking to so many people and you're interacting and that's without having a booth. And so I leave exhausted cause I've just been talking all right. day. So I can't imagine what it's like running a booth trying to sell and then also having like being sick like i can't that's not a thing it's crazy i have my machine but like yeah i got a bucket with me at all times and like i have to hide out and run away a lot so i'm not like being disgusting and losing sales but uh i make it work when i can but honestly yeah the other thing with the con especially like my main focus is my stuff that's why i'm taking the time to go yeah but not that a lot of the time is spent explaining what it is to people, which is fine too. I like being a person that can like be out there and like trying to help represent the community a little and like educate people on like, there's like a whole world of us doing this shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So like, that's kind of fun, but it is in that way that you're saying it's a bit exhausting to like, no, the candy doesn't come out of those. And it's yeah. just, you know, part of the aesthetic and it's for fun, you know? And, it's weird. You get a lot of attitudes. You get a lot of people walking by. It's like, he just 3D prints those. And I'm like, 3D printing is as much work as what I do, but I don't 3D print these. It's just yeah. different work. I yeah. did that first. People give it like a bad rap. And some people have amazing machines and they really know what they're doing. So it might have been less work than when I was doing it. Mm-hmm. But I found that to be as much work. It's why I got into casting is when I did. I was starting out with like, repaints and using 3d prints when i could i had a real bad experience hooking up with the first guy when i was trying to mold shit a few years back and it, honestly it delayed me a lot into jumping into this world sadly um but at any rate it's just weird the responses you get are weird yeah. and like dismissive and i'm like it's all fucking work you can't make your home printer print out like your tax return like but you think a 3d print is nothing it's just laughable to me yeah, I think what's crazy, um, I mean, while we're on this, we have people like Dimension X Toys who's like 
3D printing these massive Ninja Oh, yeah, turtles. those turtles? Yeah. Like, yeah, they're so sexy. I was I talked to him a lot, actually, when I first hit the scene. He's a real yeah. nice guy, too. And he, like, is sanding and painting and coding. Yeah. And, and then um, the episode that's out this week is High to- – or this the week that we filmed this is uh, High Toys in Japan who, like, 3D printed these little robot things. And it's I like, saw those. Those are cool. Yeah. Oh, and we'll cool. – like I just don't I don't know anyone that likes to shit on another person's art because they don't understand that it's art those right. are the lowest people on my totem pole right and like I've had a lifetime of dealing with those people I'm a punk rock musician and I went to school for photography I was planning on being a photography teacher and then the yeah. digital revolution happened and I was fucking not on board like I almost have a fetish for the dark room so I'm just like why would I even want this? Like now I appreciate it for what it can do for me for taking pictures of mine, my buddy's toys and other shit and my daughter and stuff. But back then it like ruined my life practically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took away my career path. They literally started removing all the dark rooms from schools. And I'm like, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. And I was already struggling working two jobs just to get my associates finished. So I kind of yeah. stopped there. But yeah, a lifetime of dealing with people that don't understand art. So, which you're describing right. something that uh, Scott Hensey said when he was on here, when they started. So he sculpts everything by hand, but then when they started doing like ZBrush and digital sculpting, he was like, "No, I'm not doing that." And now right. he looks back and he's like, "I probably should have just buckled down and did that." Right. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a tool. Like, that's what I've learned as like an old man and a Luddite that doesn't want to get on board with new shit often. Um, yeah. Everything's a tool. It's like I hated CG when it first came out, but I always said, like, race the zippers and lines. You use it in tangent with practical and it's the best shit ever, you know? So I don't know. Everything's a tool. You just have to see how you can use it. Yeah. But well, we are here for your toys and you as the artist. So I'm stoked that you made it. Uh, thanks bro i'm glad we could make it work and find a day that i wasn't feeling terrible yeah and i was gonna say even if you were feeling terrible hey we're gonna film this while i <laughs> know <laughs> we're doing it today i feel better than average and i did everything awesome. i could to try to set shit up for us today to, awesome. to be as good as possible so thanks for having me out man this is this is awesome like you're literally why i finally downloaded spotify and started listening to podcasts yeah you, you and your show bro i and, it's a labor of love dude i, I gotta like okay full disclosure. you can tell yeah full disclosure i don't people I've, I've gotten weird comments before they're like oh you're just fucking doing this for pay and it's like i don't hey. know that you know this i don't get paid for this i don't think you understand how shit like this works yeah. yeah that's like the that's the other thing that happens a lot with the con too people start to be like oh i could do this and like yeah you can't fucking do this and email me and i'll help you yeah but like people see it as like a money making venture and i'm like do do not do this because you want to make money like it's yeah it's like being a musician nowadays you have to fucking want it and you're gonna probably lose money yeah even if you're good at it i just so happen to have a good like a, a really supportive and good wife who's like hey i get that this is just like your passion don't worry about the money side we'll figure that part out that's awesome yeah and like and it's just like you're you're doing it as a service to the community and because you're a nerd and like that's like the most admirable shit ever yeah like honestly bro but like yeah you brought me out of the dark ages and like see like i don't need a thing like spotify i hate somebody else picking my songs for me i love listening to albums like reading a book cover yeah. cover in order and shit like i'm old school and i have my favorite shit and bands i like so i'm just gonna do that Hey, but yeah i'm glad you're here you now me man i'm here now because i'm all about this toy nerd conversation like this shit i, I yeah. live for this man truly because it's cool like we're gonna talk about i want to hear about your childhood your past with toys and all that Good and thing. we like i we talk about that with uh every artist but it's never the same that's no that's, a lot of us have a similar path but yeah it is always different which yeah. what would you want to get into my friend hey let's talk like you you said you're 42 correct Yes, sir. Born so 1980. Grew, boom. So you grew up in the heyday. Toys at its highest point. Every commercial oh, yeah. was just toys. Cartoons were for toys. What was that like growing up? Did you have them all? Did you want them all? All that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, my childhood was even more centered around, way more around toys than the average person. I was always a comic book store kid. 
but kind of right away, I became more the toy guy at the comic book store. Okay. I still read plenty of comics and love a lot of that shit. But like when I was a kid, like 13, 14, 15, I used to ride my skateboard like five miles to get fucking Toy Fair magazine, dude. Like I loved this shit in an obsessive way since a tiny. Yeah. Um, my first big toy thing, like my mom was fucking amazing. And I was super into Masters of the Universe growing up. So I had a shit ton of He-Mans. Like that was my main toys that I had as a kid. And she was awesome about always trying to help me find different ones. So I think that kind of helped me like be that collector. That's always like, there's another fucking figure out there you don't have. Yeah. And then, but I missed kind of the main star Wars original boom Mm -hmm. because I was born in 80. So like when I was tiny, it was all he man for me. And I actually owned like two star Wars figures. I think before I became like a preteen teenager and I was just obsessed with the films. And so from, Spending a life of going to comic book stores as often as I could, I like was aware of the vintage line. So I spent like all my preteen years getting lifts to antique stores and toy stores and collecting the original line, like before Power of the Force Two even happened. Yeah, but like that's like that was like my life. Like I'm a collector freak. I spent a long time collecting movie props. I used to also carry around with me when I would go into all those antique stores a, a print, a picture of the original gray flex flash handle that's the luke skywalker lightsaber okay and I, just, and I would go ask the people they're like where's your photography stuff do you have this you yeah. know and i like built a replica you know gray flex in the 90s when you could barely source the parts and shit yeah and i made like a scout out trooper costume when there was like one set of armor on the planet and use my dad's garage tools to like do all the finishing work and when i had you know no business doing like a cosplay of that level back before cosplay was a word you were just a nerd that people threw shit at yeah <laughs> I just, that is like i just can't help to smile seeing like envisioning a kid walking through an antique shop 10 years old just like where is this shit and like, everyone I gotta else build this fucking lightsaber guys yeah. and everyone else <laughs> looking at you like you have no business looking for that kind of a product and then, yeah, and like now those things, I, I don't even own them anymore. Like yeah. I had a couple, and then and I've, I'm also poor because of my health issues mm-hmm. <laughs> and other things. But uh, I I get out out priced of my own collectibles all the time. I've owned so many amazing movie props that I traded for, or scored for a song, but I needed money, and they were worth a lot of money. Yeah, what were and, uh, so did you like collecting? You describe uh, like owning all these toys and stuff. As a kid, yes. you play. They you played with them though. Like this doesn't sit. Oh on the show. hell yeah. Okay, good. No, but then as like a teenager, like when all my friends started growing out of toys, it kind of switched over to more like, well, I'm a collector. But yeah. I played with the shit out of them still, and I was like a huge diorama guy in the '90s too. So like the power of the force line started dropping and I was like up its ass and like at the store annoying the employees and like cutting open boxes when I should have been and like we interrupted this broadcast of Toys on Top to bring you this. Meanwhile in a galaxy of bootleg treasures. DOV2, we have an engine failure. We must crash land on DKE Toy Planet! Oh my! We're doomed! Wait! Salvation! Hooray! We'll save the DLP2! Limited edition custom artist made action figures and DKE Toys! Check out www.dkatoys.com for a full catalog. Hooray for custom action figures! DKE! Getting friends that worked at places to get me stuff. It was crazy. It was like a huge part of my life, my whole life. Up until the prequels, I owned every single Star Wars action figure or like 12 inch doll and like a lot of other stuff that was made. I had every single one. Yeah. And like the prequels, not to be dramatic, almost ruined my life. I was so devoted to Star Wars and being a nerd and being the guy that's like, well, there's there's eight new figures out this month. I got to go fucking find them. And then the prequels happened and I waited in line in the middle of the night to buy the toys <laughs> i bought them all <laughs> yeah all those stupid fucking toys and then i waited forever outside to be the first person into the first screening of the movie and i left just like dumbfounded that yeah. this was supposed to still be my star wars yeah 
like it's like a crazy level like i know as a diehard collector and i've i've spent the majority of my life watching star wars when i go to sleep every night and now i have way more star wars to watch and i would sometimes watch other films but it's like it's pavlovian for me yeah it helps me sleep i got the lucky experience because i was born in 90 so young very young age i had like I could only remember the Ewok scene because that was the only part that I loved the most. Like I, I remember putting in the tape and then record, like rewinding it to the Ewoks and then watching just that scene <laughs> and then rewinding it again. Cause it was like teddy bears running around. Yeah. You were the perfect age. Yeah. And then I got older and as a kid, like the prequels. So this is the bummer part. Like if you knew star Wars and love star Wars, the prequels were not great. But, as right, a but kid, at your age, sure. I was nine. Like, like, I wanted to see pod racing. I wanted to see this weird shit happen. These no, and there's aliens. parts of it that are amazing too, for yeah. sure. And so I, as a like coming up as a kid, I had a bunch of the Power of the Force toys, and then all the new toys came out, and I remember playing with them. And I didn't realize like the discrepancies between the prequels and the <laughs> right ones until I got older, and I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening here? Right. And I have young friends that like I have this conversation kind of a lot because like I kind of hate the fucking prequels. Yeah, like, ben, <laughs> I've I've grown to like not despise them and let it be like a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but like, <laughs> And that's like another one of my things. Everyone shits on Disney all the time. I'm a big Disney guy. Yeah. Like like all things aside, like they're a huge part of my life. They're a big part of my childhood with my mom that was yeah. passed. And they're a big part of my life with my daughter. Like I love Disney and specifically I'm fucking obsessed with Disneyland, but people shit all over Disney and especially Disney with star Wars. And they say Disney ruined star Wars. I would like to go on record to say Disney saved fucking star Wars. We had the prequels and a cartoon that's barely watchable about those same shitty prequel characters. Star Wars practically dead. Yeah. And they gave us, man, even if you don't like the sequel trilogy, which I do, I feel far, far superior to the prequel trilogy in every way. Uh, but they gave us Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett. They gave us fucking a Disney Star Wars land. Like Galaxy's Edge is enough to be at their feet every day for the rest of your existence. Yeah. And I think and I been. <laughs> yeah, like you got all these like I don't know. It's so tough to 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 think that a company would ruin it, right? Like I never would have dreamed of seeing an R2 unit in real life, but at Disneyland that thing's roaming around. So I could go see yeah. it if I wanted to. Like so, in a completely themed area. Like I've I've always been a huge new nerd for Disneyland because of that. Like the attention to detail. Like the train covers and like yeah. the fence and like if you're in the Wild West area, it's got fucking horse footprints in the fucking ground. It's nuts. Like it's every inch. Like the yeah. sight lines are obscured, so you can't see Tomorrowland from some other time period. It, that attention to detail is just the kind of shit I'm all about. Give me that theming. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I definitely feel that. I'm not a, you know, we talk like that Disneyland and Disney like. They have some, like, everyone has demon sides to them, right? Yeah, but, they're big corporations. Of course, they have questionable practices. But unless you're some, like, perfect punk rock hippie that, like, doesn't go to Walmart or support anyone right. that's not fucking perfect, right. like, like they're fine. They're also creating amazing entertainment for me and my child and for me when I was a child with my mother and, and going to Disneyland are some Hell of my yeah. best memories. So for that alone, like I'm eternally grateful to, for all having that dream and being like, I'm going to give this to families because it is fucking magical and amazing. I love that. Yeah. Place. I remember they had all the Iron Man suits at one point. Right. And I stood in there. I, I love Marvel. I don't know what it is about Marvel. Maybe I, I was a Marvel kid too. Yeah. And so like standing in there seeing looking around, seeing all the like life size suits. I can't beat that. That's not gonna be anywhere Seriously. else. And before Galaxy's Ezra Open was the last time I went, but they had a huge Star Wars display and they were like hyping that that was coming soon. And yeah. I got to see tons of original props and stuff down there. It was so badass. Yeah. So you like did all of those toys that you buy and or bought and collected and all that time, did it make it, right? Like, was there a time in which 
you finally hit that point where you're like, I got to get rid of all this? Or did it make it all the way to adulthood? Oh, no, it made it. I remember when I was kind of young, I've always been like a skater and like a punker. And like Mm -hmm. my friends like never got that. I was also like such a giant kid and a fucking goofball. I remember one time I was starting to like try to date and whatever. And I'm like, man, I'm just such a nerd. Like maybe I need to put some of this shit away. And I remember I packed away some of my Star Wars shit and like all my Terminator toys because I had a shit ton of those in the 90s. I love that line. And I was like, that lasted like a week. I'm like, no, fuck this. This is just who I am. If like people don't want to be with a nerd, they shouldn't fucking be with me. And I, yeah. I always want toys. So, and that's like now, like you can see in the fucking camera, my room's crazy. Like every inch is covered and has a toy on it. Yeah. You have a giant like statue over your left shoulder. That's gnarly. That's a, I have a bunch of props from Pandorum in here. I used to have a world-class sci-fi wardrobe collection. I literally could have opened a museum and half of my pieces are in museums now. But that's how I was able to pay my bills for like the last several years when I was like on leave from work for six months at a time or dumb shit. Yeah, but yeah, that's that. I'll, I'll take you over there maybe later. But that's uh, that's from Pandorum. There's another monster dude from Pandorum over there, and then there's three more Pandorum costumes in that corner. Damn. But they're all film used stuff, and I like built the uh, the displays of like the monsters with it. That head on that one was actually originally from that Time Machine movie from the 90s or early O's or whenever that was yeah and they, it's Stan Winston and they reused it in Pandorum if you I guys anybody listening that. and they just haven't seen it if you haven't seen it get the fuck on it it is a masterpiece yeah yes me obviously. I love that <laughs> <laughs> so uh you and then you like you go through you have all your toys you get through high school and stuff and then you start because you're you you have an art background you've already described like you're I an artist do. through and through. I am. I've done like every kind of art practically and usually yeah. not that successfully, but <laughs> okay. I just want to do it bad enough that I just keep doing it. Yeah. Like I was that kid that all my friends, like they could skate way better than me always. And like all my friends have always kind of had the like easier go, but like, you know, I'd play my bass fucking 10 hours a day so I could be a passable shitty bassist. Yeah. And that's kind of how I am across the board with art. <laughs> like like people too they like get the impression they're like oh this is just so easy for you and it's it's fucking not and it's an epic amount of work and it takes me way longer than people would think that's why you don't see me release that much and my homies get a ton of it i talk to a lot of people online but i'm also tangenty as fuck because i never sleep so let me get back to your question so yeah through (laughs) through being a teenager and in high school spending every cent i could make i had a full-time job pretty much since i was 16 but like yeah every cent i could earn i was living at home was to buy vintage star wars toys we had a toy store out here called empire toys that was like a mecca for a star wars toy shop back when that shit didn't really barely exist and it was incredible and i used to go out there and be like okay i'm gonna buy this packaged whatever with this paycheck this week because for a while too i was trying to get a lot of the all one of each of every vintage character on a package yeah before I sold all that shit, after the prequels ruined me, I had like seventy of them. Ooh, when the prequels on cards. got you. On cards, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when the prequels turned my world upside down, I was like, "Wait, this is my whole identity. What do I do now?" <laughs> yeah. You don't. You said something that's crazy to me to think about. You said you don't produce that much, but when you do, it's like massive, like great pieces. I like, appreciate it, man. Yeah. So, like. You, how long have you been making toys? I've, I've literally been doing it since I was a teenager because that's the part I'm trying to get to, but I just suck at staying on subject. <laughs> but as a teenager and collecting all of that shit like a nut job, I was also in tandem building dioramas like crazy. Yeah. And I started doing customs like crazy because the dioramas weren't filled out enough with what they made. So, like, when that Power of the Force line hit in the 90s, uh, like, I built a cantina oh. and there was not that many people to fill it. So like, that was one of my first big pushes for making customs. Like, like there wasn't a fat guy to serve drinks. So I'm like, I have to make what's the name or whatever. I'm like, I have to make the bartender. Yeah. Like I have a cantina. How can I not have the bartender? So I just like got Sculpey and got paint and got to work and started boiling and popping. And there was big message boards and a lot of guys doing incredible stuff in the nineties with dioramas. 
And so I, I just started learning it and doing it and then like being diehard. Like I made an Endor that was massive, a Hoth, yeah. Jabba's Palace, Cantina. I probably made like 20 figures for the Cantina. I made like the little midget guy that's running around that just looks human. I made like tons of people. And then, like, Endor had, like, 30 Ewoks. They were all repaints with half of them had, like, sculpted hoods on them and stuff. And, like, really bloody, violent Stormtrooper-like squishings with logs and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I've been making them, really, since I was a kid. Because I wanted more Star Wars guys for my dioramas and for my shelf. But it wasn't, you know, I've always done music and other things. I was married for, like, a, a really long time, most of my adult life. And so, you know, I have a daughter, other things became priority, but I've always like just made toys for fun and my own personal enjoyment. Like that Mr. T3PO I just recently posted, I'm mm -hmm. finally going to mold it, but I made that ages ago. And I, and it's like, it's a lot of work too. I'd like strip chrome and, and modify and sand stuff to get that to all fit. But I like did stuff like that a lot. I was just like, we'd get a silly idea and be like, well, I want to make this or uh, what would it look like if that Tuscan Raider was holding Darth Maul's double bladed saber above his head and painted like he was like a Sith or something? You know, it was just yeah. just silly shit like that all day. I'm, but I'm, yeah, I'm always interested in the weird side of Star Wars. Um, of like, I love things of like the squished stormtrooper. Like that. That's the other <laughs> toy that we need. But like even the stuff that you wouldn't think of, like. Uh, on Endor, as the ATSTs are walking and doing mm -hmm. everything, the Ewoks are seeing it. So at some point, if we were to take this to the nth degree, they would have tried to build one out of wood. And so no one has made a toy out of like logs. That'd be sick. Yeah, and that's I always think about sick. that stuff. Yeah, I had a lot of like silly stuff on that Endor thing. It was a lot of fun. I want to make a custom. I've been fucking with it, but I've only gotten so far that I'm going to mold up. That's basically like I'm doing a couple like badass warrior Ewoks that are like hunters and go out and kill Imperials, basically. So they have like armor bits on yeah. them that are like from the troopers that they've killed, like almost in like a predator trophy slash armor kind of way, almost kind of like how Pandora and Boots are. But I'm yeah. you know doing it, doing it with like armor parts. One of them I threw like an evil ash helmet on, and it looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so are you so, yeah, doing this alone as a kid? Yeah, totally. And then like started like going to model train places and miniature places because they were the only places that like could help me. Yeah. With what I was trying to learn or needed, and like learned a lot from those guys, and um, started buying like all the ground covering and all the bullshit you can use to make like your model train thing look super realistic. So like, yeah, my Endor wasn't just like that shelf's Endor. Cause that's what all the toys are. Like it had fake ground with like rocks and trees and bushes and ground covering and shit. It was kind of ridiculous. honestly. Yeah. But my favorite, <laughs> cause you went all in. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's always, I really always made toys to a degree, but like I didn't stay on that like yeah. diorama kick my entire life and started making weirder shit. And then when I stopped being able to work, especially I was, I was really using it as a, as a thing to do that was fun that I could still do in bed or whatever mm -hmm. in my room and something to distract myself with. I'm nauseous and in a lot of pain, like pretty much around the clock. Yeah. And I can't do music anymore. That was like my main way that I like got my wiggles out and like got the shit off my chest and I needed to get out. So I don't know. I've kind of switched that over into the toy world. And honestly, uh, it's just I leaned back into it again. I've always been that guy. I never stopped buying toys and being going through the racks at Walmart and Target, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I never stopped being the toy guy. But it really started happening when. I couldn't work really anymore and I was trying to get set up to try to stop working. So I had the time and I really needed something positive and new to pour myself into. When did, so I, I, this question might be a, a, like a two, three, seven part or something like that. <laughs> um, so like you, you, you've always been making toys and then at some point, so let's start with when did you find out that you couldn't work anymore? And then how did that change the toys that you decided to make? 
Well, all that COVID shit definitely gave it all of us more time, I think. Yeah. And then me and my wife started splitting. And yeah, it just kind of got to where like I was finally in the position of not trying to make a house payment and mm-hmm. changing my life in big ways to where I started trying to figure out how what I needed to do to, yeah, to get my medical stuff to be essentially top priority. Mm-hmm. And then toys just kind of happened along with that, I guess. One of my friends was watching me do repaints and just fuck with stuff for my own enjoyment. And he's like, you, you should get a 3D printer. And so he started like making prints for me, basically. And I'm like, oh, man, this like opens up the world of shit I can make so massively. Yeah. So I tried to get into that for a while. And then I was already on Insta a lot buying other guys toys. Like I've I've been very aware of the toy art world, like practically always because I was that big of a diehard Star Wars guy. Okay. Like so, yeah, like I, I remember buying like jedi spirit casts in the 90s off of some guy that like is probably the guy that was the first guy to do that kind of shit you know what i mean (laughs) like so yeah like i've been always aware of like this thing happening and kind of always wanted to do it but thought it was just you know out of reach i guess yeah it's weird uh when you type in um after hanging out with suck lord for 10 12 hours something like that um, right I would type in like different things to try to search his backstory. And I don't want to hear anyone else. I want to find old stuff from him (laughs) and things like rebel scum come up from like 2004, 2003 where people, it goes, it's this weird transition where it goes from, I made a stormtrooper look battle damaged to the next post down. Have you seen this guy that makes pink stormtroopers? And it's like, the the expression and like how far it jumped was so crazy. It was I actually like remember when that was happening and I was on probably that forum and, uh, <laughs> and I was like, I was making a joke about how it started getting like out of hand to yeah. where like everyone was starting to do like every person that was ever a hologram for the second had to then be cast clear. You know what I mean? And yeah. like all that stuff. And I was like, who's making the ghost blue wampa arm? And like, I'm, and people make that now, Mm. but like, I remember when I made that joke, you know, in the (laughs) night, (laughs) when all of this stuff started happening, I should have just been smart enough to see that that's a hilarious idea. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) When you, uh, so you've been a part of this toy world or, or have like knowledge of it. At what point did you start doing the casting and molding? So you started 3d printing. And it kind of wasn't happening. I was getting a little help here or there. Mm-hmm. So it finally got to the point where, honestly, I was so frustrated with 3D printing and frustrating of waiting that I'm just like, I just got to go for it. Yeah. And so my molds are still sloppy. I'm still learning all that <laughs> stuff. Um, uh, without Life without a pressure pot was miserable forever, too, for anybody that's watching this and starting yeah. out. Just fucking buy it. It's a like, game changer. But yeah, I guess 2020 sometime I started doing it, maybe, maybe even 2021. Once I started doing resin, I'd have to go look back at my feed. Yeah. So I did 3D prints and repaints and I got, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but I got hooked up with this dude uh, and he basically took advantage of me and made, it the, seems, theme, seems theme like they cost way more than they do. Mm-hmm. and it kind of pushed me off of molding for a bit but then once i started getting into it more and researching it myself i went ahead and took the dive so yeah just uh, when i started posting anything past to c3po that was resin is whenever i started doing resin yeah and does resin uh, this is a interesting question i think does resin affect you because you got those gnarly resin fumes coming does that affect? I do. It fucked me up a bunch. Actually, I was talking about it a bit when we did that Christmas gift exchange with Barry Oboba. But yeah. I'm reckless and I'm already dying. So, like, I kind of don't give many fucks. Yeah. And uh, I was, like, getting it all over myself all the time and stuff. And then I got it on my eye. And it was, oh. like, the most brutal thing ever. On, like, my eyelid. And it, like, gave me that, like, resin burn. And then not much longer after that i started trying to be more careful and start my skin my skin freaks out every time i pour but i'm like a high and a rash and like i'm allergic to lots of shit like my body just doesn't like anything yeah so i try to pour infrequently and then do clean up forever 
Yeah. So, and I'm very careful now and cover up, but I essentially get like a rash on my body anytime I pour. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. Holy jeez. You're diehard with this stuff then. Jeez. No. Yeah, man. That's like the other thing people don't get. Like if my time was a factor, I make negative money for myself. Like, yeah. like this is because I want to do it. And it kind of touched on it a little earlier, like. I feel like I don't make a lot. I only want to do one of ones. I've been considering doing other stuff because I feel like it's like, maybe it's like the catch them all collector mentality shit, but like, it's yeah. like people want it to be a drop of 10 of the exact same thing. But like, I just, I don't want to sit there and make 10 of the same things to begin with. And I don't even want to release that. It's like, why also I leaned in so hard to the card art thing. Like, I love it when it's both. Barry yeah. Boba called it art on art once. And I just appreciate that look at it so much not that like a printed card back it's art to art on art too it's just art on art in a different way but i don't know for me i want to make that piece the fucking ultimate it can be yeah. and like do it to death and i don't want there to be five more like it because like i don't know maybe it's from being a lifetime as an artist but to me having something that's a one of five or one of ten makes it way less desirable actually but yeah and i'm a movie prop guy maybe all that shit ties into it but to me there's not there's not fucking you know five davids you know that and the other ones that are are molded from it and are copies you know what i mean like certain things if, if it's just a one of one then you have the original and i just feel like when we're talking art that makes it more arty for lack of a better word yeah yeah i um it's tough because I like making the runs only only because I like being at things like Decon, right? And I like working with Doug. No, and that makes sense. But other than that, making runs is not my favorite because I it's tedious and it's constant. I feel but... like if you're doing like a replica type piece or a piece that's like, this is a figure from a movie that didn't have figures. Like I'm doing right. Pandorum shit like that because I'm obsessed with it. Like I feel like stuff like that makes sense. But like if we're doing something that's like this is art because of the sculptural thing plus the colors that are happening, I don't know why you'd want to share that with 10 other people. But yeah. That's just me, I guess. <laughs> I, <laughs> what I'm super interested in is as you started molding and casting and pouring resin, mm -hmm. at some point you were like, you know what? Let's throw candy in this. Let's uh, let's Hell throw yeah. some random shit in this resin and see what happens. Tell me why what that's so sick why well how did it happen that's always been my favorite stuff and watching people like barbarian rage do double casts that killed yeah or like i've i've like followed and bought from some of these guys for like ages like hands of doom is from out here and i have like one of his wampas and it's so beautiful and i have uh a stormtrooper his that has uh like nerds in it in the mm. chest um but yeah so i'd seen a couple people do just like awesome double cast or awesome add-ins and i'm just like man i'm just want once i started doing resin i was always just knew i was going to just like find the coolest shit to shove in there yeah yeah <laughs> it was always just part of the goal and so i was just like i there's like a huge candy out store, store out here it's like ridiculous like almost like a tourist destination and i just go in there anytime i have the money and like scout for candy and I've been getting badass rocks and stuff. Jazz was just bought a bunch of Super 7 figs off me. And I spent like half of it getting garnets and aquamarine and more amethyst. And God, so much good stuff, dude. Citrine, tourmaline. like It's all like watermelon color looking like so much beautiful rocks. So yeah. I love the, the doing the rocks and stone stuff. And everybody's receiving it really well, especially at the cons. People have a hard time paying 20, 25 bucks for a resin cast fig. That's tons of work for me, but they don't bat their eye at paying, you know, 35, 40 for one that's got fancy stones inside it. Right. So I, I've been kind of leaning into that too, because I actually make a couple bucks every once in a while when I sell them. Yeah. <laughs> I've wanted to design a massive, because the, the, the stormtroopers you've done are not small. Mm -hmm. They're, no, they're, the, they're the, the gentle giant 12 inch. Yeah. Which is, like to be producing a 12 inch figure is I don't I wish again people understood. Like that's a lot of resin. That's a lot of mold material. That's a giant. It is. It's a ton of silicone too, yeah. dude. That's that's five molds. Yeah. Oh my god. Just to gosh. make that bitch. Cause I didn't do it as one piece. 
Yeah. Oh, is it uh, articulated? I mean, they could be, but I always glue them. Okay, good, 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 good. good. Um, I might try to source big magnets and, and f with it, but I'll never articulate the legs. Speaking yeah. of, I don't like leg articulation on anything. I think it's oh. pointless on an art toy. I think it's absolutely pointless. I and on a five yeah. point with straight legs. What are they going to do? The can can unless you're going to put them in a vehicle, which there there's hardly any bootleg vehicles. So I don't even know why you would. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's pointless and just another reason for them to fall over and get magnetically attracted to your other art toy that's sitting on the shelf next to it. Yeah. I despise leg articulation. I <laughs> only articulate if I absolutely um, know that it's not made for a backer. If it's made for yeah. a backer, articulation ain't happening. I'm sorry. Yeah, you shouldn't. And most of mine are destined for backers. So a lot of yeah. times, too, the three and three quarters, I will mold as one piece. Yeah. But yeah, these are sculptures at the end of the day. Dollar Slice will call like his Jumbo Fett sculpture. And I think that's like a good way to look at it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not a toy. Like if, if you want to play with it, that's cool too. But like for me, it's not a toy. It's a mini sculpture. It's a tiny piece of art that I got from an artist that I think is fucking badass. Yeah. So now it's mine and I own it. And it's on my shelf to be enjoyed as a sculptural item to view. Yeah. Like my fucking toy case is like one of my favorite things. And that's all of us motherfuckers in there. But that is like glowed for days. Yeah, black light. Dang. I lay in my bed and look at my fucking all of my favorite miniature art pieces. To me, I don't need to pose them or quote unquote play with them. I want them to look beautiful on a shelf. Yeah. I think uh it's tough because when we say we make toys, the connotation is like, oh, you make things for kids that they play with. It's like, regardless if it moves or not, it wasn't ever intended for a kid to play with it. It's intended yeah. for your shelf. Yeah, and most of my stuff is. I have tons of stuff in this room that is toys and was sold as toys 40 years ago. But you touch one of my rare Thundercats, I'm going to slap your face. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to say, I uh, the first time I saw um, one of your uh giant stormies with all the candy mm -hmm. i immediately was like if when i have time i need to reach out and see if he'll let me design a giant backer for it and i've you just, thought about doing that dude yeah go ahead so sick i would love to design one based on like a willy wonka star wars kind of mashup yeah let's do it let's do uh let's do a candy trooper and you can do a car back if you want. I'm, I love collabing, so just talk to me about it, bro. Oh, sick! I because I uh, I did one a giant back row a long time ago, and I found out you can do metal ones, and they're like a carbide, and you can like it's nice. cut, it's got the top, it's just it's beautiful, and I love it. Yeah, I'll design, I'll send it to you. Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, let's mess around. Um, I'm also gonna do more jumbos. I have a wicket I'm yeah. molding soon. I have a fet right here. I'm probably gonna mold. Um, I don't know if TIE Fighter might come first. I love Fett. I'm one of the guys that that does like to buy Fett. Yeah. But I get the whole thing of there being too much Fett, and I feel it too. But it's also what people buy. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I love him still. Yeah. But he'll get done eventually, I guess is my point. Have done these. You 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 started to make these jumbos. Can I ask what made you Hold on, we got to pause real quick. I, I want to yeah. go back to leg articulation. Um, the one, <laughs> yeah, I don't love articulation doing it in general. I've talked about this a lot. Like, I don't love magnetic. I don't love, uh, I'm experimenting with ball and socket right now. I just don't, like, because I'm not a factory, I don't have the ability sure. to do some of the cool shit. But um, the the hip joint that turns instead of the legs is now my favorite thing. Yeah, that's like, better. Yeah, because it's like... That's yeah, actually easy to do with a magnet. You can chop that Star Wars five-point style yeah. guy in half, and now he can spin. That's better, I agree. And it's way so better. funny because no one's body moves that way. And I... <laughs> like, no. That's what but I kind of do. Like, your torso turns. Like, you can turn and shoot a guy to your right and keep your feet pointing forward. Yeah. So, and like, in that way, it, it helps. <laughs> but you can keep going in, like, an exorcist way. Yeah. Um... So when you started making these, what made you jump like 12 inches, such a, like a crazy size to go for. 
there actually is a specific reason. Well, A, I always wanted to do jumbos. Yeah. When I split with my wife, I have one on the shelf over there. I, uh -huh. I haven't photographed it and posted it yet, but I hit up Dollar Slice because I've like coveted one of his jumbos for years. Yeah. He's been doing them for ages and he does way more than fat. But uh, I've always wanted one. And it was kind of one of those things where I'd like sell a bunch of crap and be like, try to tell my ex like, hey, I want to buy one of these. And she's like, you're crazy. So when I split, I was like, that was like almost my divorce gift to myself. I yep. had a dollar slice. And I was like, I want a badass vet that is like a centerpiece in my toy case to be like, this is what you can do now that you're single and be like a reminder to me that I get to do what I want, support the artists I want. I spent a lot of time when I like before I was on the scene and when I first got into like I'm a punk rock dude and a musician and I believe in supporting the people you like. I have a massive Pamro collection. I've supported him for years. Uh, he told me the other day I have more of his figs than anybody. But to like a fault, like I was like hitting people up like desperate, like me and uh, me and one trick are good buddies. And we became friends because I'm like, dude, like my money's disappearing. And I, I, I'm, I'm having to like tighten my budget more and more every day. Every time I get a windfall, like I'd be like, I need to buy one of your figs, dude, before there's not money to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, but I don't know. Like I've, I'm, I just loved it to death, but on the jumbos, I, so I, I always saw dollar slice and a couple other people doing them. And I, it was always kind of like a dream goal to get to in making toys. And also like my, my health and life hanging in the balance for years. I want my ashes put in a jumbo trooper. So my best friend, Danny now knows how to do it. And he's going to do it for me when I go. Uh, when I first started thinking about it, I wanted to start a business. I just don't feel well enough, especially with the deadlines. So I don't want to disappoint anyone. Yeah. But uh, I, w I wanted to start it as a business. Like, have you seen people get like turned into records or into diamonds yeah. and then all this shit? And, like, I don't want to be buried. I'm not a religious person, but like, I don't want to be in a box in the ground. So I don't know. Like, this is this is me. And that I felt was like the most me thing to do was to have my ashes be in some stormtroopers. Uh, you say that as if there is a time in which you know this is all up. Is there a time? I mean, they haven't given me one of late, dude. But like there's been so many close calls. Yeah. And like it's not easy to be a sick person in America. Right. My life has actually gotten easier now that I don't work because I can actually like qualify to get some of my medical stuff paid for because it was just bankrupting me for years. Yeah. Um. So it's gotten a little better. But dude, during COVID, I didn't couldn't even get my feeding bags for my preparatory feeding machine that there's no other option to. Yeah. For like nine months, I almost literally went on a heist at the factory because like I was going to like starve without them practically. Yeah. So yeah, there's it's things over and over, dude. And and my my shit's uncurable, so I just get kicked out of hospitals a lot of times because they can't fix me, so they don't care. So dude, over ten years as an insanely chronically ill sick person, there's I'm I'm lucky I'm still here. Yeah. My, my daughter gives me invincibility almost, and I'm so grateful for that. But my life's fucking impossible. Any yeah. sane person would have drove off a cliff at this point. But I've choked on my feeding tube, thrown it up so much into my throat. Like, there's been so many close calls, dude. But, like, yeah. So it, there's definitely, there's no date, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, but I, I'm grateful for any more years I get. Shit, Shit's a little improved recently. After I did this thing called TPN, I had to get a surgery and feed through my veins for a while, which helped me put on a lot of weight and balance things out a little. But yeah, it's it's constant, dude, just to stay fed and alive, essentially. Can I ask you, I mean, this deviates a little from toys, but like what <laughs> what what is keeping you going? What what makes you say like, no, this isn't it. Like I gotta keep fighting. Dude, it's my daughter and it's this. I have toy homies and I have this art to pour myself into that people are appreciating. It's funny too, like when I was a photographer, I made shit that people would never want to hang above their couch. Yeah. It did well in an artistic sense or even like in a competitive way in an artistic sense. But it's hard to be the guy that makes sad ass photos that people don't want to, you know, have or care about. Um, and then as a lifetime, like hardcore punk musician, it's very niche. And it's and most people don't give a shit about that, but 
I've always loved toys and I just decided to do this and I just decided to make what I wanted for myself and kind of be like, I'm buying this off of other artists. This is like a thing now. Maybe I can do this. And then like, it's been the least path of resistance of any art I've ever done in my life. Yeah. And it's flattering as fuck. It's amazing. Like the fact that like I have friends, I have artists that I admire that have my pieces on display in their house. And like yeah. that alone is incredible. It's like very similar to like being a, a local punk band and getting to play with all your favorite fans when they come to town. Like just the fact that I get to be buddies with these guys and be like considered among them and that people look at my art and appreciate it as an art thing. I don't know, as an artist my whole life, just like that somebody wants to take this thing I spent time and poured love into and like cherish it and display it is so flattering and like rewarding. So that's a huge part of it too. So really, it literally is my, it's my daughter and toys, dude. That's what I live for now. It's what gets me the fuck out of bed. It's what makes me paint toys when I'm laying in bed and get rashes all over my body and pour any scent I can make right back into it. I love this shit. That, I, I gotta tell you, that makes me like, like teary eyed. Because, <laughs> like, I, I, uh, like it almost makes you want to cry because like I I I love the community. It's an I, amazing place. But I'll never understand the depth of the community that you're expressing. That like this is what makes you want to keep going. It's a huge part of it, dude. The toy community has been amazing for me. I lost almost everything over a few years. I've yeah. lost my health ages ago, but I lost my marriage and my home and most of the items I owned and things I worked for my whole life and yeah it became like it is it's a huge shining spot in my life I have buddies I get to talk to online and trade toys with the ones we make or otherwise it's this awesome positive distraction and it's I get to keep pouring myself as an artist into stuff and then it gets to be super real received which is just amazing fuck man <laughs> like, <laughs> wow 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 okay so, so yeah need, as long as i'm together, like huh? have a heartbeat guys yeah. i'm gonna keep making shit it might yeah. be few and far between and like i've been doing like a post blast of late but yeah i've been working on some of those like those jumbo troopers i worked on those for like a year guys i've been casting parts for those and fucking with those things forever yeah so yeah it's not i'm not just like well this weekend i made six jumbo troopers no man <laughs> like <laughs> that was like any time i could like get out there and do it you know and like stretched out but like yeah um yeah, yeah. So but yeah i'm we... in it for the long haul nerds <laughs> <laughs> so as like you have progressed you've been a collector your whole life you've been um like into toys your whole life you make toys you make sick ass toys um what are the things that you're most into collecting toy wise now? And what are some of the toys that you see in like toy lines that you're like, yeah, this shit's rad. All right. Yeah, for sure. I had this conversation a bunch recently, actually, because I'm like, I'm getting to that point again. And we're like, I got to handle some debt that's still hanging from my medical stuff and whatever. Yeah. So I'm, I'm having to be more selective. But for you, the last few years, even before I was on Insta, it was way leaning harder into like, I'm going to support an individual and buy a piece from them. Yeah. So that's always been my focus. But I also have like tried to collect from vintage lines I'm into. So I'm super into the, the vintage Thundercats. I'm still trying to recollect the vintage Star Wars line again. Um, I love like all the 80s cartoons like Silverhawks, Masters of the Universe, Brave Star. I collect from all of them. Yeah. Um, I just almost finished my vintage Silverhawks set because actually my frustrations with the modern toy world, I feel like we're getting fleeced as a community. Um, a $60 figure shouldn't be on the fucking shelf at Target unless it's the best thing ever. Right. And it's most of the time it's not. And they're just like, well, we can fucking gouge the He-Man guys again or the Turtle guys again. Like, I don't know. I'm like, I just have had it up to here, it, mm. especially when there's a whole world of like badass artists making honestly way better shit. Right. So I've kind of like switched gears. I started getting into some of the recent Turtles because I love those characters. I was really pumped that there was a new Gargoyles line. I'm like, my Gargoyles should have been there. Yeah, I yeah. saw that I have a, Goliath is I have, massive. 
It's huge. That's another problem with them. Actually, they're like too big. I don't have the room. Yeah, but like there's a gargoyle cell up there. Like I'm, I'm a nut. Like I love gargoyles, but I was way pumped about that line. I must have went to Targets and Walmart and shit like forty times to get the first two, and then I never saw the next three. Yeah, that are out now, and they're all like seventy five dollars online. I was barely on board at the thirty five forty price, and then like plus how expensive gas is and everything else. Like I'm fucking done, dude. So I sold one of them, and I'm keeping Goliath, and that's all I'm buying. And I'm literally one. Not to like be whatever. I'm one of the bigger gargoyles fans, probably fucking around. I'm obsessed with that shit. Yeah. And I like fuck you guys, honestly, NECA, if you fucking hear this, like eat a dick, make your shit easier to get. <laughs> it's a <Yeah>. nightmare, dude. <laughs> I uh I you know what's crazy is uh I loved gargoyles for sure. Every more I a nineties kid, so like before school, that shit was on TV. I, I was yeah. stuck in front of the TV. I used um, to take my skateboard or my rollerblades to school, and me and like one of my friends would race fucking home to catch gargoyles after school before yep. we missed it. Because because that shit it was like an anime; like you'd be fucked up if you missed an episode. Yeah, so we watched that and um, like all the X Men show, uh, like the X Men and Spider, of course. Um, but like I'm, I don't know about you, but I've grown more obsessed with the lesser known toy lines or the ones that are dumb as fuck. <laughs> Me like to like rock lords and shit. There we go. Uh, <laughs> like that one is crazy to me. It seems dumb. Barnyard commandos seems. Oh yeah. Good. Uh, the fighters. Ta- like yep. The Tycho bro, Dino I, riders. So I literally stupid. came up with a toy line that is a bunch of this crap jokingly on accident with my roommate Danny. Yeah. And like I'm I'm gonna have to do it eventually, but it's essentially like Rock Lords with the shitty transforming He Man Rock guys, which is so funny because at the same time we were already getting robots that were like badass robot into like a fucking plane or a truck or something. Yeah. And then they're like, here, it transforms into a fucking rock and it doesn't even look like a rock. It's like a shitty rock. Yep. <laughs> so it's like it goes from a shitty looking guy to a shitty looking rock. It's so funny to me. But I, I came up with the dumbest concept. I'm going to call them imitators and they're going to be potatoes possibly sculpted right over some rock lords. <laughs> <laughs> and then warriors inside, but I also want them to be like street sharky food fighter like nice yep. like oaky glasses and like fanny packs and shit, but they're going to be like soldiers and then imitator tots for little kid ones yeah but they're gonna be soldiers too just like real fucking life and then i have like a million stupid fucking ideas for this potential toy line that really doesn't even deserve my time in silicone yeah <laughs> it'll eventually happen but yeah i love that shit too i love the brave star figures i used to be a solid three and three quarters guy and hardly yeah. want anything else except for like he-man and thundercats maybe and like those brave star figures i'm obsessed with those right now they're so fucking cool same with silverhawks holy shit yeah. and like that's the other thing i was like fuck this price on all of these new silverhawks toys i was way excited at first and i'm like no fuck this price i collected the vintage line for a uh, way less way way less than it would cost me to buy all the new silverhawks toys and that is stupid yeah and that's the same thing with turtles you can buy almost all of these characters on a vintage card it might not be perfect but a decent vintage card for the same money as buying a, a new NECA figure, like why would I? Yeah, and I'm, when I can have the thirty-five-year-old one. Yeah, I think the problem. Uh, so this is this is where I'm at. It's cool to see NECA, right? Like they they do cool stuff. Whatever, Marvel Legends, it's cool. You guys do cool stuff. No, it's um, not that they don't do cool stuff, but on yeah. the niche stuff, it gets fucked up. But go ahead. Right, uh, and I, but I'm more. I think that. I, I did damage to my brain in that, like, I opened myself up to the toy world, which means you find all the stuff that is better or that your brain, like, you get yes. dopamine rushes for. So for me, instead of the Ninja Turtles toys, it's like, I want the Ninja Turtle bootlegs that came out in other countries. Right. I want, gotcha. like, those Dino Riders. I just want the characters or the dinosaurs. Like, I don't want any of the new toys or, like, cowboys of moo mesa or street sharks like those are they're stupid toys that are so fun but it gives my brain right. this like head rush that i'm like i need to chase it's it. like that's yeah it's like nostalgia in a ball especially as like a yeah. 90s kid 
So yeah, I totally feel that too. But I could look at NECA and not feel a thing. No, it's true. And this thing you touch on is also like the toy scene runs so tangent with the punk scene. And there's actually a shit ton of punkers in this scene, which is awesome too. But, uh, and I think it's because we're all DIY and don't give a fuck about rules. (laughs) So we're just going to do what we want. But, uh, it's funny. Like it's very similar. And I view the toy thing a lot as that. It's like, not only can you go collect the vintage line, a lot of these things, you can go collect a badass glow glitter resin one from some badass artist. Right. So like I could go buy some package swamp things. I'd love to have one on my wall, but really I'd rather just be patient and save up and try to grab myself another one from one trick, you know? And it's like the punk rock thing. It's like, yeah, like radio music's okay. Like, like Prince is a fucking bop, but like, that doesn't touch what the fuck goes on in the punk scene. And yeah. it doesn't give you that dopamine and that like, man, it's art, dude. That's like the other thing too. Like you're, t- you're touching on like the nineties nostalgia bit too. But then once you bring in the, it, it and apply it to the bootleg toy yeah. thing, it's both. So it's like, it's like, yeah, it's art and nostalgia. It's like, how can you not love it? Yeah. You know, I, uh, I have you heard of the artist vomiting droids? Yeah, he's one of my favorite artists. So I love his shit. I, for a while, so I have an addictive personality. I, uh, I would say, you know, Barrio Boba, when he listens to this episode, he'll scream at his phone. <laughs> right. Here. I'm not a toy collector. I, I have toys. I'm not a collector at heart. Um, I just find some of the stuff from when I was a kid. But I have every wave of Barrio Boba's. Uh, homie nice. i have every wave um and that'd be a badass set to have dude. it's That's cool incredible. yeah and like and they're all i have them out and uh uh vomiting droids i have three of them but he is one of my favorite people because his art like he deliberately makes them look funky and yeah he, very like avant-garde especially in the toy community yeah and I'm addicted to Ewok toys. I don't know what it is. They're weird looking. They're- Everybody is. Everybody yeah. loves Ewoks. I didn't even get to keep one of the Wookiee walks I did, if you saw those, where I cast the Chewbacca yeah. inside an Ewok. Oh, Everybody so loves those. They're so cool. I'm going to try to do that with the Jumbo Wicket when I do it. Do it. So he he makes the Ewoks. And one time I bought two of them. Cause, uh, mm-hmm. but I he got has, three of those fuckers. There we They're go. But he, as fuck. he has a rule and it's so funny. He said like one time he was like, I got a drop coming. And I was like, sweet, I'll take all five. And <laughs> he was, he was like, no, I got to try to get like, everyone's got to get one. And I was yeah. like, bro, but I'll, I'll just take all five now. No, I, I like, he has some pieces of mine and I offer to trade with him constantly. Yeah. He doesn't like setting shit up and like having to be responsible for that trade. And he is, he's very much like, I want to spread it around. I managed yeah. to get three of his Ewoks early on and that's all I have still. But I love, I love more. Like I love his shit. Like, so I miss weird. that split fet drop and that yeah. shit is so great. But you know, he's great. I'm also obsessed with his fucking logo of that little yep mouse droid throwing up as a guy that throws up all the time and loves star wars to death like i wish he had that as a shirt yeah like i'm gonna straight up ask him if all uh, if i pay for a run of shirts of that i don't care yeah. <laughs> and i'll send him to two of the cell like i always wanted it as a shirt i think that's uh that's sadly the the problematic piece of toys on tap for me so i i, I interact with so many different artists all over the world um and it's super great and i love it and it's one of my favorite things but because i'm interacting with so many at a time when vomiting droids has an ewok release i miss it i missed oh. out on the split fat or I like I, um, yeah, I, I miss that one too it's stupid and, feeling shitty or the doctor comes yeah know. and so it's like <laughs> It is what it is. I, I'm I'm getting the best part of the toy community, but losing out on parts that are my favorite, sadly. Yeah, but think about all the stuff that like people have just sent you or hooked you up with. Like you're gonna get a care package from me here at some point. It should already be there. I'm just running a little behind. But yeah, and that's like dude, like I do a lot of collabs. I was just having this conversation with Titty on the unpunched for set we're doing. Yeah. Like we're gonna send all those to charity, we just decided. So we're doing an animal charity out there that he picked that like helps homeless pets, which I'm way stoked on. Cause not only do I get to like have this buddy that's like across the fucking planet. Yeah. Now that we did this thing together, like I get to help some people across the planet that need help by having fun with toys. 
And that's like the coolest shit ever to me. Like, that's like why I do the blue R2s, which I'm about to start again. I'm trying yeah. to get those to where I can mass produce them faster and produce more donations. And I'm going to do shirts for that soon too, for that. Uh, I'm blue. It's okay. If you are too, the blue R2s I make, I don't do donations to Trevor project on those. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's a great way to do collabs and me and Titty are going to like, yeah, do that on ours and start pushing that more in the future. I think I might set up all Unpunch as charity functions going forward. I'm doing a collab with uh, another artist in two that doesn't cast yet. So I'm sending them uh, some of my stuff yeah, and they're going to put it on a, on an Unpunch card and we're doing a donation for that too. That's see. Let, let me brag on you for a sec right here. Yeah, right? I hope this doesn't make you feel uncomfortable. You've you got some shit going on. Like you, sure. your life has been tough in some areas. And yet you still are finding joy. And your first inclination is to do stuff for charity. Like, I, I don't know that I've spoken to a better human. I mean, I appreciate that, dude. I'm not perfect. But, yeah. um, and like facing your mortality a lot, if you're not a piece of shit, usually makes you want to be better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I have laser focus and I have more shit I can sell. My friend is my best friend's amazing and he took me in. So, um, I mean, I'm poor and I have to sell my personal things a lot to make ends meet, but nothing will make you feel better than like, pouring yourself into something like that and having it be a donation when i was first doing this stuff i made a blue r2 for myself because my life's fucking hard yeah and uh and it was a message i needed to hear for myself personally but uh i decided i there should be more and then i should do something positive with it and then when i started making those and selling them for donations and people in the toy scene started asking for them it was incredible, man. It was amazing. I was able to take really hard moments in my life when I was really struggling or like around holidays or other stuff that like, you know, with like my mom being gone and other things. And instead of being sad, I knew I could sit there and pour myself into this thing that was going to do some good. And like Trevor loves them. Like they reached out to me personally. I'm going to make some for them so they can use them and auction them off in person for fundraisers. And like the breaking that wall, like I'd love to have another 30 bucks to buy cigarettes or weed with, yeah. but making 30 or 40 or $50 donation off of my time for that toy and donating it to a cause that I think is fucking incredible and needs our support is like the most rewarding shit ever. I'll, I'll be poor and take that positive feeling all day. And maybe it is because my life is sad and hard. But like that fills up my well and that gives me motivation that I need to get things done sometimes too in a way that money doesn't motivate. Me. So with all the stuff that you work on and all the stuff uh, you got going on, do we have a sneak peek at possibly what's coming up next for Spice Train? <clears throat> Molding those Mr. T's hopefully soon. Okay. I have a I have a quiz, Christopher Walken Pez that's in silicone right now. Hell yeah. I'm going to do like glittery gold Christopher Walken Pez's and shit. Yeah. I want to eventually make my own Pez style base and do a whole line of those. And I'm starting with weirdo actors. Bashemi's probably next. Yeah. Um, but I want to do one that says spice on the side that has a hollow chamber inside that I can then fit mini Pez's inside. So you can like magnetize, pop the head off and pour out. Like essentially I want to do a clear, clear base with uh, the whole color spectrum of the rainbow of Pez's inside it, and then different okay. color heads. You can take the head off and dump out all the little resin Pez's, essentially. So I'm working out the logistics on that, but that's sometime soonish. Tons more wood backs, tons okay. more stones. I bought a shit ton of stones with that money I got from Jazz. So I just have to hit the materials place, and I'm molding so much stuff. I've kit bashed a lot of three and three quarter guys that are more unique and not just like the character. Like I did those pilot uh, people a bit lately. I love doing like I call my like cold weather pilots. So I'll do like an X wing body with like hoth arms and whatever head. Yeah. And I have a bunch more of those that I'm finishing right now too. But uh, so but more like actual work kit bashes, not just part of swaps. I developed a weird little pilot that's actually the back off of a Super Seven worst figure that looks very X wing piloty. 
combined with X-Wing stuff and like grafted together. He's probably gonna have this super fucked off helmet. And yeah, so I have like weird shit like that. I'm trying to get finished right now to mold. I also have a gargoyle that I'm molding that's got silicone on it already. That is on the vintage gargoyle line, the only Brooklyn figure they made in the normal colorway is a yeah. total piece of shit. I don't know if you remember, he's got this horrible mouth that opens and like no neck. Yep. It's like the worst fucking toy ever. Um, so, but they made this ice one that looks decent. Yeah. And, but he's got like ice on him and he's not the right color and shit. I essentially have stripped down and sanded and parts swapped between the two figures to kit bash a perfect vintage Brooklyn that doesn't look like a total piece of shit. And I'm going to paint those accurately and release that. So yeah. that I've just wanted for myself my whole life because I hate the original figure, like with a passion. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like making one that looks like the cartoon and using the vintage parts so it looks right. Yeah. So those those are coming too. So that's probably like the next mold stuff and just lots more resin stuff. Like I love Star Wars. I'll never stop making it. And being who I am, being broke and wanting people to just have my stuff, I haven't kept hardly anything for myself unfortunately um and so i i i gotta move into that zone of keeping and making for myself again more but like yeah. yeah i appreciate it too much like when my buddies reach out they're like blown away by a piece and want it like b to the j's the shit and so is like fletch tycos tacos yeah two of my, like good homies and buyers and like if they reach out to me and say they want something i'm just going to give it to them like mm. they can they can buy it and have it in their collection like I, I love them and i appreciate that they want my stuff and want to display it and enjoy it but because of that i'm like like i don't have a wookie walk i don't have like multiple characters now yeah. that the molds are dead on so i'm like well shit i gotta make start over and make those for myself so the star wars will never stop i kind of have a secret life goal of casting and making a bootleg of every vintage star wars figure yeah if i can Damn. live long enough that's the goal I'd love to have a wood back or painted custom card back of my own making and a vintage figure of every vintage Star Wars figure. If I can live yeah. like another 10 years, that's what I'd like to do. But I don't think I get that. <laughs> so as many as I can get done. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, as we start to come to the end of this episode, uh, my favorite thing, brag about yourself, plug everything, where we can find you, how we can get um, more of your art in our lives, everything. Fuck yeah. Um, I'm super approachable and bored and love human conversation. So first and foremost, my homies get first choice. So okay. anyone can be my homie. Just reach out. Don't be a dick. So um, the easiest way to get the hottest spice shit is to just contact me. Um, if not, I'm on Insta posting drops. That's the main place I sell besides at cons. And also Polar Bear Pop Culture Shop in Scottsdale, Arizona carries a decent selection of the spice um seven days a week six days a week if they're open <laughs> oh, uh let's see. we got unpunched collab dropping soon with titty beans i am doing final touches they're getting mounted to the cards right now and photographed mostly blacklight reactive batshit crazy trash backs if yeah. you've seen the unpunched before people listening um it's just more of that but this time it's with titty Last series with was was with Universal Pit Stop. He still has some available in his shop. But yeah, my Etsy is always empty. Um, my Instagram and my closet is usually somewhat full. So just contact me. Uh, next up, we have Hurt Toys on the Unpunched collab. We have uh, Ocular Rhombus is going to paint mine. And then after that is hella radical. I'm trying to get Dario Boba to do it because I want to do little baby trash backs with his little figures. Yeah. <laughs> For the unpunched. So I want yeah. him to do it soon. But uh, yeah, unpunched is not stopping. It's an exercise in friendship and fun, and which is what I feel collab should be first and foremost above a business venture. So like it's more collabs with buddies that want to fucking do it because I love painting other people's toys too and getting to know these guys better. So that's that's it for me, man. I'm just like I'm just molding and casting more shit. If I can ever feel well enough and afford it, I'd love to get to some out at state cons. Yeah. But as, right now it's just not in the fucking cards. So yeah, if you want spice or you want to get to know spice and talk way too long about fucking toys and life's bullshit all night, just reach out, man. There That's we how go. You find me. Hey, thank you so much for being on Toys on Tap, making this shit work. 
Thanks, least, bro. Sorry we got so tangenty and only got to talk so much toys. I know. I guess hey, that's what this is too. Yeah, I, I mean, the whole thing is like it's toys and backstory and life, and I think that's right. what makes this worth it for me because it's I not. I agree. It's not, not just, just a commercial, right? It's not just a plug. Right. And it's cool to talk about our shit, but like, let's face it, anybody that's coming here to listen to us is probably because they know who we are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're aware of what we're up to. So like, I think it's way better really to like, yeah, get to know each other. And like, I just listened to the titty one and it's so cool. Cause like I admire and respect these other artists so much yeah. that I love like hearing their backstory. And so it's, it's badass that you like give us all a platform to do that and like share who we are as a person. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And uh, I don't foresee stopping anytime soon, man. Well, fuck yeah, you keep going on this shit forever, man. I do have one more plug I just remembered. Yeah. It's toy related. I'm hitting the stage with my new band for the first time since 2020. It's been, I used to play out multiple shows a month my whole life. So if you're in Arizona, Yucca Tap Room, Yucca, yeah, Yucca Tap Room, uh, August 11th, free show. My band, Unholy Missionaries, will be there. Uh, being lunatics it's a seven member folk punk polka band folk punk polka i'm into it Rad. so yeah any arizona fools come out to that uh what else you got for me is this the end of our thing my friend this is it this is it this is the end hey i can't say thank you enough and i can't say uh, enough how inspiring you are as an artist and being able to still look outside your own life and say that like you'd rather do this for joy and get money for other organizations and we need more of you in the toy scene i appreciate that that dude so much Toys on Tap. Toys on Tap. Next episode. Next episode. It's great. It's amazing. You're going to want to listen to it. It's not right now, though. You're going to have to wait till the next episode to listen to it. Oh, when's that? The next one. Cool. Toys on Tap. Toys on Tap. The next one's going to be good, too. So stay tuned and, and, and listen to that. Toys on Tap. Awesome.